I don't want you to know the story of Sharper. I want you to be completely surprised by Sharper, and I think you will. It's, I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a mystery, so it's, uh, it's like peeling the layers of an onion. You find out more and more and more as it goes along, and everything you find out surprises you. It jumps forward and backward in time. The plotting is like a steel trap. You can't miss a single sentence. You've got to really pay attention. Uh, but, you know, it's like a bunch of gears that all come crashing together at the end. Uh, it's my favorite kind of movie. It takes the, the whole notion of greed and, uh, and envy and uh, revenge. It takes all those simple human urges, the unsavory urges in all of us, and spins a story out of it. it I mean, everybody, everybody wants more, and everybody envies other people for having more. Uh, this just explodes it into pathology. But these are really smart people, all of them. Uh, so, and they require you to be really smart to follow all their strategies. The cast of F Sharper is a, five really, really good actors, not to sound self-congratulatory, but they're playing characters who are really good actors. So they're sort of shadows inside of shadows. Uh, the whole notion of putting on a, a really, really good act is sort of key to every single plot twist. And you got to be a good, an act, a good actor to do it, to pull it off. A good actor has to play a good actor. I've always wanted to work with Julianne. She's one of the most original and co courageous actors working today, and she's been working for three decades now. Uh, she has done so many extraordinary things on film. Uh, you know, if you think of the big Lebowski, the same actress has done amazing roles in the Big Lebowski, Boogie Nights, The End of the Affair, not, on, not to mention her Oscar-winning role. Uh, and she just loves to act. She loves to act. She's, but as original as she is, she's equally courageous. She will do anything. And... Uh, I can't quite imagine this film without her. It, it just takes that much audacity as an actor. Sebastian is my great new friend. My longest and most complicated scene is the one I shot first, and it was with Sebastian all day long. It's like a five-page scene. Walking in, walking upstairs, settling down, sitting in chairs, uh, with all sorts of events taking place, one of those complicated scenes where you have to be on your toes and really working with somebody who's really sharp. Well, what a great way to start. And I found out so much about him, his fascinating background, how he came to acting. By the end, I was, I was insisting that he write a play about his own life. Richard's character has lost his first wife, and he still has a son from whom he is somewhat estranged. And into his life has come this new love, who is just what he deep down always longed for. She, he just longed for this woman, and he found her just in time. And Julianne plays that woman. He's a very powerful man, uh, very self-assured. Uh, he's pulled himself up from his bootstraps and thinks everybody else should too. But he has, he's addled with love late in his life, and he's afraid of death. So he's got, he's got power, love, and fear all cooking inside him. This is Ben's first feature. He's been in charge of some of the best actors in the world on The Crown, 
and they all just loved working for him. I mean, that's quite an achievement right there for a young director. When I was driven to, this, to the first rehearsal, the, uh, the driver, one of the transportation crew, said he'd gotten this letter from Ben Caron that had been sent to every single member of the crew. He said it's the first time he'd ever gotten a letter like that, welcoming them to the whole project. And I said, yeah, I got that letter too. <laughs> this sense that we are all in this together and it's going to be fantastic. Uh, it's extremely rare.